Hey there. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're at. Welcome to, what is it, 21st of May of the 50 Question Friday. Uh, let's see. So to get started, if we could go into the heart space, let's take the three breaths. Just settling into the physical heart with your attention. Taking a deep breath in from the earth, breathing in that light of the earth, connecting heart to heart. Connecting heart to heart with creation, source, soul, creator, God, breathing in that light. And that third breath, breathing in both earth and sky together, bringing both those energies together within the heart. And then become grounded, connected, and in the heart space. Well, good morning, everybody. So we got some of the usuals here on today. It's good to see everybody. Philippines, Sweden, Dominican Republic. Uh, Dominican Republic. Oh, my goodness. I need to I really want to go there again someday. Worked there for like three months building um parts to a cerveceria <laughs> fun stuff all right so we don't have any um questions as of yet on the internet um as far as emails so let's go ahead and we'll just start here today and see what you guys got and again if you could drop your questions those of you who are here live um, to drop your questions in on the question side. Texas, Washington State, Southern California, North Carolina coast. Fantastic. Oh, we got people from everywhere here. Um, so Linda asks, what ring would you suggest to use with tuning forks? Um, so if you're using tuning forks and um, you know, you hit your tuning fork and you bring the butt in. And if you are using it physically on the body, um, you know, I'd almost suggest that two inch harmonizer ring is a good one. Um, yeah, actually that two inch harmonizer ring, I usually have one here in my pocket. It's one of my favorite rings. Um, that's the one I would suggest. And that's that one right there. Because it's something that you can, if that is to get your tuning fork going, you can hold that ring and bring the butt of that tuning fork up to that point. If that's how you use the tuning forks, Linda. Um, otherwise, I know a lot of other people who use tuning forks just in the field. And they'll just bring it through the field versus using certain points on the body. And if you're just bringing it through the field... Um, that's, you know, you can certainly use any ring at the base of it that would work for you. Um, you know, I'd even say getting a the smallest size, the size four silver finger ring and putting on there because that's the chalice ring. Uh, the copper rings are pretty fantastic too. So, I mean, if you are just using the, the tuning fork in the field, you could use a larger ring like this at the base or else you could get a smaller one like what we have for the finger rings and jumbo which tool is the best to protect against the effects of the jab um so really you know you can totally use any of the tools um and I, we can discuss some ways to do that but really the you know to do in the consciousness work you know the consciousness work is really the way to go with just about everything out there in the world. The tools are phenomenal and we need tools, but you know, actually just doing the work. So when you can imagine that if you've already received any kind of an injection, whether it's all the way back to when you were a kid for measles, smallpox, whatever, um all the way through to if you had a recent injection um you can go to that time go into the heart space imagining going to that time 
and seeing either the vial or the shot and just sending unconditional love to it. Um, you know, you can imagine it um, like the divine I am activation we did two weeks ago. Um, you know, the last 50 questions Friday. And um, you can just imagine bringing in that, that sphere of energy of that divine I am. And it just spins around the uh, whatever it is that you're having the injection of or whatever you're taking orally or whatever it is that you're ingesting. Um, just bring it into that field and allow that to harmonize. So if you um, and so that's one way to do it is through just that visualization intention of going through time to whenever that was received. Now, if it's something that you are getting ready to receive, do that too. You can um, do it in real time when you are right there and just go into the heart space. Just imagine harmonizing that liquid as it comes in. If you've already received it just recently, you can just imagine harmonizing the spot Imagine harmonizing everything that is within the body. And um, it doesn't take long. I mean, it, it these shifts happen instantly. Um, so again, it's just about being in the heart space and holding that field. Now, if you, you know, if, if you have a physical spot, you can actually hold a ring onto it if you wish to. So using any of the rings on the spot, um, my first thought actually when you asked that uh, jumbo of what's best to harmonize that that vaccination, um, you know the wands, oh hey I have one on here today, the golden fire and light wand, you can actually just run energy to that spot and have the intention of it following all through the body and doing that harmonizing work, that clearing work, harmonizing throughout the entire body. Uh, JR, is the quantum healer working best as a passive tool and worn on the body, or do I need to use it as a wand to get the most effect? Um, the quantum healer is another phenomenal wand you can use too. So with the quantum healer, it is working passively. Um, just it's most people that have the quantum healer are using it in a passive sense. They're just wearing it on their person, carrying it in their pocket, on their keychain. Um, you know, a lot of us add it to our other pieces. And um, passively, it's doing phenomenal things for the field. It's really subtle, but it is doing everything from um, electromagnetics to the dense consciousness to everything because it is using your field to help transform any of that that's coming in. Um, so the quantum healer is great passively, but truly to get the most out of it, JR, it's um, using it in an active sense. And my apologies, I don't have a product video for that one yet, but if you go to all of the other wand videos, you know, particularly the golden fire and light wand, um, you know, because once you are bringing in the attunement to that golden fire and light wand, then you have the attunement to that golden fire and light wand as part of the aspect of the quantum healer. And <clears throat> once you attune to that, which is basically just knowing that energy, um, then it is going to bring through more for you. So once you attune to the golden fire and light wand, it will actually bring through more for you on a passive sense when you're just wearing that quantum healer because then you will be attuned to, you'll know that energy of the quantum healer or of the golden fire and light wand and that'll come through as well with the quantum healer. But really with um, any of the tools, basically when you use it with conscious intent, your intention, your energy, um, your divine intention, things work so much more um, because again we are such powerful creators and these tools are the training wheels for us to do that work um, they hold space they um, you know they help to hold that energy 
so that um, after we start using them for a while, we would no longer need that tool to, let's say, run energy. Um, you know, I'm just starting to work with the Golden Fire and Light Wand again. Um, I'm just put it on here today again and have been for the past week or so because there's something else coming through with the wands now as with all the tools and that's um something that i'd like to discuss with the energetic updates with the tools <clears throat> excuse me um was it just yesterday no the day before yesterday um brendan and i did some more work with the tools again in that um we anchored in well yeah we anchored in fully that divine i am energy into all the tools and so now then like the dragon wand it has the regeneration field it has the golden fire field it has that energetics of the dragon wand but then it also um a while back we we anchored in that chalice energy so that crystal clear pure light of the chalice is available in all the tools it is just always there just it's underlying in all the tools but the divine i am it's um it's just another higher step um and it can be felt more tangibly on the physical it is doing everything that all the tools do um so this divine i am has been placed into the tools but yet it's not overriding everything. So is what I'm trying to say is so that your dragon wand is still your dragon wand. It still has all the base frequencies and properties to it, but there is all the other available in there. There's that chalice energy. If your soul chooses, there's that divine I am, which again, that is something that is your higher soul self is the one who brings through and utilizes that. But you can have that conscious intent of bringing that through any of the tools um let's see christine i have the golden fire and harmony generator bracelets okay so with the golden fire um bracelet and the harmony generator which are the collapsible tensor field generator bracelets if i put them inside each other and put the regeneration generator in the center would it put out the harmonic creation field if so how far would you feel okay so Adding all three of those tensor field generators would be that golden fire on the outside. Then you'd have the harmony one, and then you'd have that regeneration one in, in the middle. And that would bring through that harmonic creation field trio, which is, you know, the, the three rings, the, the harmony, the golden fire, and the regeneration. And that trio of rings is pretty amazing. We used to make the gateway pendants. We still make the gateway tab with, with that trio. And we have the practitioner sets in that trio. So when you use that trio as in generators, then yes, it's going to create a field um, of that harmonic creation field trio. So it's going to be broadcasting that field out instead of creating the columns like those the, the rings would do. When you have the generators where it's broadcasting out in a 360 degree sunshine effect, um, I'm just trying to look to see well to feel what the sphere of influence of that trio would be <clears throat> and to me it looks like it's about five miles which i guess that's about what the um, harmony generator is going out is about five miles but to me that's what it feels like <clears throat> christine is that um that trio is going out in about a five mile field uh renard hey there I have an I pyramid Taurus. Awesome. I love the I pyramid stuff. I have an I pyramid Taurus and is wondering if you've ever used your tools in conjunction with any of their tools. I really need to get myself an I pyramid Taurus. Um, no, I have not used the tools with, with their Taurus. Um, and to me, I feel like it would just, it would harmonize. So to me, where where their Taurus, it's it's a donut shape. It's it's an orgone style donut with the copper wire windings through it to create that true toroidal field. And you plug it into sound, and it brings through frequencies uh, like 
you know, you can play music through it and um, it'll bring the, the energetics of the music through. But it's, it's creating, you know, an electromagnetic field. Um, you know, they sell a little, well, it comes with a little steel ball that you sit inside of Taurus. And you can see when it is active, how that steel ball just floats and runs around in there because of that toroidal field, the electromagnetic field. So anytime you're working with electromagnetics and you are bringing in the tensor field, it is going to harmonize it. And it is also going to synergize to where the electromagnetic field is also carrying the energetics of whatever's coming through the ring at that time. So they do amplify each other. They, they harmonize well together. Um, I do know that. And um, so, yeah, I, I'm glad you have one of those Tauruses. And I look forward to getting mine one of these days, too. Um, Linda, you mentioned that a silver bale is in the works. Will this be able to be used to put the rings together, or is it just for a particular pendant? Um, no, the silver bale that we are making is going to go on a new Taurus, actually. It'll be the Divine I Am Taurus, and it'll be um, little and petite. But that veil that we are having created by a local jeweler smith, um, it's only going to go on this particular Taurus, the, the, this ring right here. And so it's something that gets soldered on. So we make we get the veil, the veil gets soldered on, and the bale has, it, it spins. Um, and so we'll have a little spinning Taurus pendant one of these days, but um, it's it's a local jeweler and we're still kind of waiting to see what's gonna happen there. I know it's gonna happen, but they're just a little bit um, slow on getting us things here. So basically, yeah, that bale is only gonna go on that ring. Now we do have another thing coming up here one of these times soon, which is the elementals pendants. These have a bronze bale, um, copper ring, shungite, and the different elementals in them. And that's the only other tool that we have with a bale. This one here, we actually drill out and insert the bale into the ring itself. So, as much as I would like to make a lot of different um, pendants with the bales, maybe maybe someday they're just uh, you know they increase the cost quite a bit by putting the bales on them, but it is nicer than you know wrapping your leather around it or running your silver cords through it. So I understand that. Um, Pam, I've used my eye Taurus on my Ascension Pyramid. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's really fantastic. Um, Jumbo, I noticed that when I started wearing the tools, more synchronicities and paranormal things happened, started happening in my life. Indeed, the synchronicities, because it is bringing through that higher soul connection, and you will have the synchronicities. And the more you recognize the synchronicities, the more they happen. So yes, the tools definitely are holding space for those synchronicities, the flow to occur um, and the paranormal things. Yeah, because it does take us into a higher state of vibration to where we are more, we're closer to those other vibrational fields, um, dropping the veil, so to speak. Uh, Eugene, I'm a newbie with tensor rings. What would you recommend for anxiety and to process emotions? Um, you know, the, the binary infusion pendant is really a phenomenal one. Uh, the binary infusion pendants is, is kind of one of our newer pendants, and it is bringing through that divine I am energy. And as far as the processing the emotions, it comes in and helps to release and clear and harmonize those emotions that you are ready to let go of. And it just does that automatically. Some of the deeper ones, it's gonna to help to bring them to the surface, but it will do so in a much more graceful way. Uh, we were talking about the Harmonic Creation Field Trio earlier. We made the gateway pendant and that was had the three rings in it versus just the 
the two rings of the binary fusion. And it would process the emotions, but it would be a little bit harder for us because we'd actually have to recognize them, take the breath and release them, which was still so easy compared to what it used to be. But with the binary infusion, it's making the ones that are ready to be released to just automatically release. Um, and as far as anxiety, so there are many different causes of anxiety. Some of them are the physical body because the physical body is going through so much stuff. And with everything that's going on, you know, with all the outside um, things coming through, like all the different, you know, solar flares, all the different geomagnetic stuff. I mean, there's just a lot that is acting upon our body to assist it in the changing. And so we're going through huge body changes that brings anxiety. So if you, um, if you go through, I'm trying to think of which video it is. It's one of the meditations, um, you know, we've done on the 50 question Fridays, but there's also some meditation videos there on YouTube, um, on our channel where we walk through going into the heart first and it's, um, we go to that field of neutrality. Basically we do the sacred heart activation. We come up to the pineal. We go to that quantum mind. Um, and in between there, there's that field of universal peace. And it's bringing in that field of universal peace into the body that helps with that anxiety. So, you know, the tools are phenomenal, but again, the consciousness work is, is the key to everything. And so, um, and I tell you what, here, uh, Eugene, here at the very end of the show, we'll just do that meditation um, and bring in that field of neutrality and that field of universal peace and that chalice energy. And that chalice energy really is the newer fields that we're working on that we can hold within the physical that is going to release a lot of that anxiety. And some of that anxiety... Um, you know whatever whatever the cause of that anxiety it is we don't have to know the cause we just know it's energetic we know what's affecting us we hold the space and we allow for its transition its transformation it's transcending um releasing harmonizing whatever it is that is creating the anxiety. So anyway, we'll do a quick meditation here at the end, but otherwise, as far as tools, yeah, I'd recommend that binary infusion, copper or silver, doesn't matter. Um, let's see, Renard, I've noticed I hold a lot of other people's energies in my back. Which tool would you recommend I use to clear that? Um, you know, and I know you have quite a few of the tools, Renard. Um, just about anything at all basically what you can do is there, there's a few different things that you can do that that harmonizing that we that we did um this last round i talked about doing the harmonizing but basically again it goes back to doing the actual work doing the um that that meditation visualization um the soft intentions of releasing that and so basically it, it can be super simple in that you just go into the heart space you ask your soul to stand before you you ask your soul to release those things that no longer serve you you can set an intention that you um that you are transforming any of that or that if it is not yours that you don't take it on because it is a disservice if we take on other people's stuff they need to deal with it themselves so um that can be just as simple as that intention too but um you know being in the heart space asking your soul to release that is really the way to go especially right now where we're working in these higher fields with this chalice energy with this divine i am um it it, it can be so super simple uh, Christine, I've just put a quantum grid point. <clears throat> oh, pardon me. 
getting over allergies. <clears throat> My daughter and I both have something going on here with allergies. All right. <clears throat> Christine, I just put a quantum grid point in my large container of drinking water. Just want to make sure the material is safe to do so. I also have the chalice ring on top and the large harmonizer ring around it. This is combo good for water. So the quantum grid points are made out of echopoxy. It is a plant-based resin. Um, you know, we have, I, I'm trying to remember if we've looked to see about drinking water in small containers. I know that we've looked into being able to put them into, you know, bodies of water and that is completely safe there in the bodies of water um, because it takes hundreds of years for those to, to dissolve. And so let me, um, let me sit with Brenda with that one. Um, Christine about the quantum grid point in the water in, in your drinking water. But to me, that feels like that is perfectly fine. I mean, especially if you want to scrub it off just to make sure it's good and clean. Um, because we just use like a spray, which uh, we put into the molds, which just is an easy release agent. And so, you know, that has some form of, of residue on, it, I'm sure. So just making sure that it's clean, good, um, soap and water. But to me, that feels good. Um, but again, maybe send me an email, Christine, and then I'll look into that with Brenda. And then I'll even post that onto that quantum grid point page, what we find out about the safety of water. Because I do know that for like aquariums, um, they use that epoxy and in marine aquarium settings. And marine aquariums, I know, because I... You know, I have a, an aquarium with live rock and some invertebrates, and, you know, they're sensitive critters, especially in that contained space, when epoxy is perfectly safe for that. So I'm logically guessing, Christine, that it is safe, but again, um, I'd like to look deeper into that just to make sure. Uh, Terry, how does the infinite light pendant interact with the binary pendant? Is it best to wear alone? Um, no, actually, I tell you what, the infinite light pendant and the binary infusion pendant, somebody sent me a photo of theirs the other day where they have them together. Holy smokes, I haven't done it in person, but when I saw the picture, I was blown away. Um, the way that those two, to me, feel together is phenomenal. The binary infusion and the infinite light. Um, they're, they're doing something really phenomenal together, so... Yeah, I would totally say to to put them together and wear them. Um, oh, and then Christine, sorry to go back to um, to the rest of your question about the water, uh, the chalice ring on top and the large harmonizer ring around that. That is a great combo for the water. Um, I love the chalice energy with the water. To me, the chalice energy is is phenomenal with the water. To me, it's it's just a lot crisper, cleaner, clearer. Um, you know, it, it, my body responds well to it. Um, to me, it feels really good. Uh, Jumbo, do the tools emit high frequency sound that the human ear cannot hear? That is a really good question. Uh, Jumbo, because, okay. So, you know, there's always different frequencies coming through the rings, but a frequency can be, um, in so many different spectrums. So there's light frequencies, there's sound frequencies, um, and it just depends on those specific bandwidths. I would say that no, that there is probably not anything that you can or any living critter can get through the auditory of the frequencies of the rings because it is more along the lines of the higher, the light frequencies, where people who can see the color of sound, uh, I forget the name of that, that's actually a, a thing, and it's a name of somebody who can see the color of sound. Um, I was on the tip of my tongue. But anyway, 
Um, those who can see the color of sound can see that the tensor fields change that. And, you know, and then um, there's a lot of people who work with sound with the rings and they notice an, a, a difference in the, in the auditory aspect of the sound that they can hear with their auditory as well as what they can feel with that sound. But um, as far as the tools creating an auditory sound, I don't believe so. I think it's, I think it's a much higher frequency than that. But that's only my semi-intuitive logical guess on that, Jumbo. Uh, Christine, I have four of my family spread around town and was thinking of putting a quantum grid point in each of their houses. Would they need also to have a golden fire generator to protect their home from EMFs or would it take care of it as I know you spoke of it containing the golden fire? Um, no, you know, if you have the quantum grid point in your home, it is going to take care of everything that the golden fire generator would. So a quantum grid point is absolutely perfect for the home. Um, and then, you know, the only difference would be, um, I mean, as far as the sphere of influence, because the quantum grid point is going to cover the size of the home, which is perfect, which is what you're after. The golden fire generators are going to be covering more of the neighborhood because it has that two and a half mile sphere of influence. Um, but you know, it's, then the other, the other really cool thing about that, Christine, is when you have um, your family members, or if you're doing it, if you have your family members or whoever it is that's putting the quantum grid point there, um, you know, they'll have their intention of what they want the flavor of the energy to be, what they want the, the energetic space to be held. But then you can have the intention that um, where all of those grid points connect, everything that is inside of that square or rectangle or whatever shape it is that you've made you can have the intention that they're all connecting and creating that field of everything inside of there too which is kind of what the grid points are about is they are about holding a point to where you're creating a larger sacred space um, so let's see Hey, Millie, tuning in from the gym. All right. <laughs> Good to see you today. Thank you for uh, thank you for your inspiration of being at the gym today. Indeed. Um, and Judy, having fun with the headache and the tuning forks and water. That's very cool. That's very cool. Um, so let's see and again as far as um the the tools that are used for for emotions and for releasing emotions again yeah the binary infusion pendant would be you know because it's a it, it's it's a fairly affordable pendant you know i think it's like what 55 or 58 which has the two rings in the lanyard um and that's that's a pretty phenomenal pendant to wear for, for working with emotion. Let's see, going back to questions. Uh, Marsha, you showed an elemental pendant earlier in this chat. Could you give some information about it? Um, yes, so we we had the elemental pendants going, you know, for a number of years. And then we were just using the harmony ring around the outside and it was the perfect size and, um, then when the golden fire came along, I just really wanted to update the elemental pendants before we put them out. We never could find the right cubit size. They kind of got set to the side, which is, you know, kind of a bummer. We really do need to keep working with these elementals. Um, you know, it's the, the elementals are the ones that these are the ones that my sister Brenda channeled through. And this one is to sell the fire elemental. Um, pretty powerful one man when i put this on and i put it up on you know the high heart throat which i should probably do right now it um as if i don't have enough on today kind of ancient alien artifact on today um this chisel it will burn away a lot of things 
Um, but the elemental pendant. So the elementals, again, that my sister channeled through, there's uh, Chisel the fire. There's obviously Hedica, the water elemental. There is Ether. It says, I have no name. I am everything. There is the Plymela, which is the wind, and the Kleem, which is the air. So the Plymela, that's the wind. It's actually... Um, it is actually just an energy mover. It just happens to represent that it's moving the air, but it moves all of the elementals. Um, so the elemental pendants are now they are in the divine I am ring is what we're using. And they have, they're made of the echopoxy, the plant-based resin and powdered shungite. And then we make the little elementals and put in them and so it's a pretty powerful little pendant and it's you know it's small enough it's petite enough it's light enough but it's um and they look really nice we're considering someday making them because it has a brass bale the copper elemental and we're considering making the silver rings but we got to get these guys released first just so that we um you know so we can get them out there it it's a process you know anytime that we were making new tools we do the time studies on them then we do time studies again because we want to make sure that we are getting the tools out there with the right price because we we want to make sure that well yeah that we, we get the right price for the manufacturing of the tools um so and then we want to work out any little kinks and bugs in them so we always utilize them for some time before we get them out there but these ones are almost ready so the elemental pendants um yeah they'll, they'll be av available in all the five elementals april i wear the taurus the binary pendants with the quantum healer what do you think oh yeah that feels really good to me um to me that's a great combination because it is covering so many la layers and it's it's bringing it into the physical because that taurus really does help to integrate that into the physical cells so um yeah i think that's a great combination april um let's see so that is all the questions up here right now unless you guys got some last minute questions here we'll do a meditation and um and then call it a day here and um let's see so for the meditation um would like to walk us through the the whole process of activating the sacred heart and of bringing in that chalice energy and then from there it's just simply holding that chalice energy as your body becomes the chalice and you hold that energy and it's your your soul brings it in and as you hold that chalice energy and you just sit and you just be um that's all you do you don't try to fix yourself you don't try to fix the world definitely don't try to fix the world it doesn't need fixed really the only thing that needs fixed is our own perceptions of the world and everything within and then once everybody else does that too then hey it's going to be a different place but it's a different place already when you go in and hold that for yourself because it does change your reality and um yeah and that's all we really need to do work on ourselves we can hold space for our family and once all of that is in good shape then we can hold space for the world um, so this chalice energy again is not one that we can direct or have intended outcomes with it is the chalice energy is one that we simply hold and we allow we allow the release work we allow the harmonizing the clearing um, we allow the healing we allow ourselves to let go of the things that no longer serve us. Um, and that's 
really about all we do at the chalice energy but yet it brings miracles i mean it's it's pretty phenomenal it, on, on what it does so anyway here we go you guys we'll run through a meditation So again, just going into the heart space, imagining the physical heart, finding your light, connecting your light to the light of the earth, breathing in that unconditional love and energy right into the heart. Next, connecting to the heart of creation, source, soul, creator, God, breathing in that unconditional loving energy right into the heart. The third breath, breathing in both earth and sky, bringing both energies together within you. So it's the light of creation, the light of the earth, and the light of you. You are a column of light that's grounded, connected, and in the heart. Now imagine your soul standing before you, however you see your soul. I see it as a golden, luminescent being. It could be an orb. It could just be energy. It puts its hand on your physical heart and it activates the sacred heart. So taking in that deep breath, allowing that golden fire, that golden light to spread into every cell of the body, in between every cell. Bring that golden light, that golden fire up to the throat then right up to the pineal gland, right in the middle of the brain, and we set our pineal on fire. Now we imagine the figure eight, the infinity on its side. It's just connecting the left and right brain, just infinity after infinity, opens up the right brain hemisphere, connects the brain all the way through. Now imagine that infinity going upwards to your higher mind, to the quantum mind. As we connect to that quantum mind, that's where we find that field of universal peace. We go higher to the field of neutrality. Beyond the mind. And we go higher yet to this other space where we ask the soul to bring in that chalice energy, that crystal clear, pure consciousness light. So just allowing that energy of the chalice, that energy of the divine I am, that field of universal peace, allowing all of that to come down and settle into the body, into every cell, in between every cell, all the way to your toes. And with that crystal clear, pure light of the chalice, it just starts to transform. Transforms those things that no longer serve us. Harmonizes, releases from our reality. So this expands outside of the body. This is more than just working with the body. It is working with your entire reality. It's releasing programs, belief structures, traumas. So when you're in this space of just that divine peace, and if anything comes up in your awareness, situations, emotions, whatever it is. Just take a breath. Allow all of that to come in. We're not going to push it out. We're just going to bring all of that in within the emotions, the situations. Allowing that to all transform with that chalice energy. And just imagine that out breath, you're just releasing, you're just harmonizing. 
So again, breathing in everything that is in your reality that you would like to shift. Just breathe it in. Imagine it harmonizing as you release. Harmonizing reality. Oh, wow, you guys are doing some powerful work right there. And all of those who are watching this later, we're holding space for you to do that work as well. Awesome. All right, my friends. Hope you guys have Renard, I just went Super Saiyan Blue. <laughs> Yay. Um, yeah. Hope you all keep playing with this because it's it's pretty phenomenal. Um, we can change <laughs> we can change our reality with it. We really truly can. Um, so anyway. I am off on an adventure again today, going to take my daughter to Meow Wolf. She's done with school and she's officially a sixth grader now. And she loves art. So we're gonna go to Meow Wolf. We've been talking about it all school year. Some kids wanna go to Disneyland. No, she wants to go to Meow Wolf. So it's off to Nevada. Hey, good to see you guys. Thank you for being here. And I believe we'll see you guys next week. All right. Take care. Oh, by the way, we're having a storewide sale coming up too. Just thought I put in that plug. So that's starting Saturday. So keep an eye out for that. All right. Later on.